My name is Jason Nedlovsky, and I am going to show you how to create that cool little spooky sequence here in DaVinci Resolve. We're going to use a little fusion, a little color page, a little edit page. It's easy, and if you want to download the files to follow along, I'll leave a link in the description below. You can pick them up and do the exact same thing and try it out for yourself. Let's jump in Resolve. We're here in DaVinci Resolve, and if you download the files that I provided for you in that link in the description, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna have two files, and one is gonna be like a clean plate, right? So if I turn off my track two here, on track one, we want a clean plate. I just filmed a little bit of the background there of my scene, and I just want a clean plate, nothing there, so that I can use that as the background. Now the second clip here is of me dressed up as a scary dude. And you can see I just stand there, I kind of stand up so it makes it look like I appear. And then I just walk towards the camera and walk out of frame. So you wanna have your character on track number two or a track above your background because we're gonna isolate our character here. So the first step is you get these kind of lined up here in the edit page. The next thing we wanna do is jump over into Fusion. So select your clip with your character or whatever it is that you wanna have turn into particles or show up in particles. Then we wanna jump over into Fusion, a little magic wand at the bottom here. So in Fusion, there's a couple things that we wanna do. And the first thing that I wanna do is actually isolate my subject here. So I want to use the magic mask to do that. Now, if you have the free version, you can still do it. It's just a little more time consuming to manually mask out your character or whatever the object is. But the magic mask makes really short work of any kind of masking. So I'm gonna select my medium one, press shift space bar and search magic mask. Then I'll choose add. And now we have our magic mask. I'm gonna select that. And in my inspector up here, I wanna come down to mode. I'm gonna choose better. Under stroke mode, I'm gonna make sure I've got the plus selected. And now I'm just gonna select or draw over top of my character here, drag over top, try and isolate him the best that I can. And then I'm gonna hit this button right here, which is gonna track forward and backward our subject here throughout the entire frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Resolve's gonna do its thing and track him as well as mask him throughout the entire video clip. All right, the magic mask is complete. Now, if there are any areas like maybe the green grass here that you wanna try and remove, you can use your eyedropper with the remove tool here and just try and get a little bit of that green there. And that should take it out pretty good for you. So now that we have our subject isolated, we need to create our little particle system. And if you saw the recent video that I put out about how to you know, explode an object, we're basically gonna be using the same type of particle setup. So first I'm gonna come down into my node area. I'm gonna select shift and space bar and we're gonna add a P emitter node. I'm gonna add that. Next I'm gonna add a little P turbulence. So I'm gonna say shift space bar and choose P turbulence. Add that in, and now we need a renderer. So again, shift space bar, and I'm gonna say P render, add that in there. And now we have our little particle system here. So in order to hook this up to our magic mask, all I need to do is come to my P render, select our output, bring it up and drop it on top of the output from the magic mask. It'll automatically create a node for us and link, link everything up. Now we're gonna make some adjustments so that it looks the way we want it to look. I'm gonna come back to the beginning of my clip here. I'm gonna select my P emitter node. And up in my viewer up here, I can actually grab this red circle and make it a little bit bigger. And that's just gonna make the area of the particles a little bit bigger to start with. Coming up to my inspector up here, we wanna go to style and we wanna change our style to blob. Now you can change your color if you'd like to. In this case, I'm gonna make it like a yellow color, maybe like here, and actually maybe a little bit of a dimmer yellow, kinda of like that. I think that'll be good, I'm gonna say okay. You can even adjust the opacity here a little bit if you wanted to. So I'm gonna change it just a little bit, drop it back to say 0.75. Next, if you come down to size controls right here, we open that up, we can change the size of it. So if we make the particles a little bit bigger, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to see up here. You can also change the size variance if you want to. And all these things are gonna to be to taste, you just adjust them however you want the effect to look. So after making those couple of adjustments, we can come back to our controls right here. We can bring up the random seed a little bit. We can also increase the number of particles that we have. So again, this is gonna to be to taste. You can do it as much as you'd like. I think I want a little more particles to start in the beginning there. You can change the variance if you want to, the lifespan, how long do they last, as well as the lifespan variance. All that's gonna affect how long they stay around, how long until they kind of flicker out. So you can adjust that however you'd like. If you want them to move a little bit faster, you can come down to velocity right here. You can bring that up a little bit and increase the velocity that they move around. 
Now you might notice when I increase the velocity here, it starts to kind of go out to the right side of our frame there. If you want it to kind of stay in the middle and really just go out from the middle, you can come down to angle Z here, double click in there, and we're gonna say minus 90. And now that'll keep everything around the center and just kind of expand it out for us. The next thing we can do is come down to P turbulence. And if you wanna adjust some of these, you can. Let's say we wanna crank up the, uh, the turbulence factor a little bit there, kind of get those particles moving around a little bit more. You can increase the density if you'd like to. All these things again are to taste however you'd like the effect to look. Maybe that's even a little much. Maybe I'll bring it back a little bit. I don't want to spread out the particles too much here in the beginning. So now we're starting to get the effect that we want, right? If we come to the beginning of our timeline here, we can try and play through it. And my computer's not all that strong. It's an M1 Mac mini, a couple years old now. But you can see here, we do have the particles kind of flying out there. They're moving around a little bit. But what I want to happen is instead of those particles staying the entire way, I want it to look like our character appears and then I want the particles to kind of like fly away and disappear as the character walks by and walk, walks off the screen. So in order to do that, I'm gonna come ahead a few frames. So it looks like our character stands up here and then starts to walk right here. So maybe right here is where I want those uh, particles to start to dissipate, right? So I'm gonna come back to my P emitter node and I wanna adjust the number. So I'm gonna add a keyframe so that we've got you know, 58.3 in this case, up until this point in time, then I'm gonna come ahead a few frames and then I'm just gonna drop that number back to zero. And if we give it a second to render up here, we can see that the particles start to disappear there and then they should start to dissipate over time. Now the lifespan is at 100. So if you want them to disappear a little quicker, you could drop that down a little bit uh, as much as you'd like. So now we're kind of getting the effect that we want, right? So if I jump ahead a few more frames, we can see it looks like there's no particles here, right? So it depend, depends on you on how you want to set up the particles to last longer or not last as long. Totally up to you. If you're having a little bit of trouble viewing this and playing it back because it's just too uh, slow and your computer's lagging too much, what you can do is jump back into the edit tab here. And in the edit tab, you want to come up to playback and make sure your render cache is set to smart. This is gonna allow Resolve to kind of render things in the background for you. And it's gonna show you this red line over top of your clips. Once those clips are rendered up or cached in the background, it's gonna turn blue, and then you should be able to play through it fairly easily. So it looks like mine's all cached up there. Here's what it looks like so far. Now we just have our guy appear there, right, with the particles. We can see them start to dissipate, which is what I, I wanted to happen. And then he walks off screen. So a couple things we want to change. Well, we don't want the character to just boom, be there, right? So I'm going to add a little fade here. Maybe, I don't know, a second and a half, two seconds, something like that. So now it looks like he fades in through some particles. I kind of like that. Now the clip underneath, I'm also going to fade that in a little bit, you know, just for a little, little style points there. So we've got fade in the background, character fades in, and then it walks through and walks off screen. Now I don't need to fade the character out because he's off screen anyway but I can fade out the background there if I wanted to. So that's kind of the effect that I'm going for, right? With our fusion and our particles. Again, you can adjust it however you want to make it look like whatever you want. But now let's color grade it a little bit and kind of make it feel a little more moody, a little bit darker, feel like maybe it's nighttime or something. So I'm gonna jump over into the color page here. I wanna start with my background node. So with the background node, let's just say I wanna make it a little bit bluer. So I'm gonna grab my lift, bring some blue into the shadows. Maybe I'm gonna bring a little more blue and purplish in the, in the highlights and the gain there. I can't even just drop the whole thing down, maybe make it a little bit darker, add some contrast in here, change the hue just a little bit like that. I'm kind of liking that. Could boost the color a little bit there. And that's looking pretty good. I kind of like the way that that looks. Now we can see when my character comes in here, it doesn't really fit, right? It doesn't quite match. So I could just copy the grade over by using my middle mouse wheel, selecting the clip I wanna copy to, the middle mouse wheel click on the clip I want to copy from. And if you don't have middle mouse wheel, you can always right click and choose apply or append grade. It's going to do the same thing for you. So now it's kind of cool. We see him there, but he's a little hard to see. So maybe I want to, you know, change his color a little bit, boost him up a little, make it a little bit brighter, maybe something kind of like that. And we can change it however we might want to change colors and basically do whatever you want to give it the look that you're looking for. So if we play through our clip, we see it kind of comes with the particles there. <clears throat> they kind of disappear a little bit down here is a little, maybe we don't want that part in there, but you know what, it's not too bad. It would require a little bit of work here to get exactly what we want it to look like. 
but you get the idea of what we're trying to accomplish here, right? I filmed it during the day, kind of looks like it's at night. You could even add in other things like a flash of light behind the guy or do other cool things to make it look like he appears out of nothing or out of a flash, a boom, whatever it might be. You could add in some sound effects there to really just kind of bring this whole little scene to life. A lot of cool stuff that you could do here with just a basic little couple of shots here and a little bit of fusion, a little bit of color grading, a little bit of edit page, boom, you got yourself a cool little scene. I hope you guys found this one helpful and you were able to download the footage, try it out for yourself. If you did give it a try, post it online somewhere, make a short, whatever it is, tag me in it because I want to check it out and see what you guys are able to create with just these two basic clips and a little bit of fusion, a little bit of color, and a little bit of edit page. You can come up with some pretty cool stuff. If you want to know a lot more about fusion, check out Casey Ferris's page. He's like the fusion man. So he's got tons of great stuff in there. I'm always watching it to learn a little bit about fusion. So if you want to know a lot more, you can check out his stuff. But uh, for now, that wraps this video up. I'll be bringing you more fun stuff here that we could learn in DaVinci Resolve, work on together. And uh, yeah, with that said, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. All right, we're here to record this video again because I forgot to hit record. How many times do I got to do that? You know what I mean? I think I never learned my lesson. It's just, yo, you do a whole video, then you forget to hit record. Man, oh man. One of these days I'll get it. I'll get it. All right. At least I hit record that time.